Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about some rules that you don't violate as a software developer. So let's get into it. So basically the question in question here is what can you name can you name some rules that are universally true and that you never violate? And I actually have to think about this quite a bit because you may not well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. There's actually quite a lot of these rules that everybody says that you're going to abide by and you have to do that. And if you don't, you're violating some form of universal law of programming. But the sad fact of the industry is that, well, there's only one rule that I think is constant for this sort of thing. And that is that change is, is constant. And basically that means that whatever you decide to be best practice or whatever you decide is important to you. It's just a matter of time before you have to change something or you have to make a deviation from a good practice or something like that. All, all that is required for you to take all of these tiny little beautiful rules that most of us call best practices and throw them absolutely like straight out the window is that a stakeholder comes to you and says, hey, we need this to happen. Because as soon as the stakeholder says, oh, we need this to happen and you go, oh, well, but these th that will violate my beautiful code or the way I want, we should write things and they can, and then they immediately say, well, yeah, but we need it. But you go, no, uh, that's going to make the code ugly. Yeah, yeah, but can you do it? Well, technically, yes, yeah, but then I don't hear, need to hear, any, hear anything else. If you can do it, do it. And since it's about money, you're going to have to do it. But there are two rules that I've so uh, that I could think of that are there aren't really subject to this. I've never ever heard of anybody ever violating any of these two rules. So rule number one, you test your code. Nobody violates this uh, practice, and if they do, I don't understand how they are in any how they're able to work or how it's possible for them to ship anything or how they can even be a software developer. Now, when I say uh, you test your code, <clears throat> that doesn't necessarily mean that you do test driven development or any type of automation or auto automated testing, anything like that, that doesn't really factor into it. But testing your code, verifying that it works is something that you just do. This is not up for discussion. You always verify that your code works. If it's a function or if it's a feature, it doesn't matter. You have some process of testing. It can be as, sim as simple as that you make a change, you go to a website or whatever manually and just click around and verify that it works. Because without that, you can never guarantee that the thing that you're doing is going to work. It's that simple. Software development, and this is something that's very tricky for some people to understand, that it, depending on the system and depending on the feature, software development is actually oftentimes more about verifying that the change didn't break something or that it's working in an intended fashion, as opposed of it being about you writing the code. I don't know how many times I have had a story where the amount of work effort, the most, like the amount of lines of code that I have to write is no more than maybe 50 lines of code. But the verification and the testing takes several hours to do because of the complexity of the system, because you always have a chance that you broke something. So that's the rule number one, I would say no one ever, ever, ever skips testing. And if they do, that is like the, as I said, like it's, it's almost like defying gravity in my world. You're, tr you're trying to do something that is, it's a universal law in my world. Second thing that everybody does without exception is to back up their system or back up the code that they have in some fashion. It's, um, it doesn't have to be a version control system. It, most people do use a version control system of some sort. Most of us are using Git or Mercurial, uh, then there are people who are using Subversion, and there are a few others as well. But you have some fashion. I mean, it can be as simple as you save the files. Like uh, in design land, I know that they, a lot of designers have this pattern where they make iterations and then they just copy paste the folder that holds their artboard and just make a new one and then make changes to that. That is also technically a, a version control system. Without this, you have no way of getting your code back. 
if something goes wrong. Unless you are backing up your code in some fashion, or if you lose it or if something goes wrong or you know there's a power outage or corrupted files or anything like that, it, you're pretty much screwed. So, and in I would even go one further and say I, it's almost a rule. It's not, I can't really with a good conscience say that nobody violates this idea of having a version control system, but they should have a version control system of some sort. Because just having like a changing code and never having the ability to just roll back the changes that you made, that's really, really bad. I mean, the bare bone, ba bare bone basics is that you have them backed up somewhere uh, on some computer somewhere, but being able to roll back is as close as it gets to a, a rule. I don't think I've ever worked for, I've never worked for a company, I've never even talked to anybody who doesn't use a version control system of some sort. In many ways, it's. I wanted to add a third rule here and say that in many ways the same is true for databases, that you need to have a backup system or a rollback system, a recovery, some, something like that for your production databases. But I'm sorry to say that although that should be a hard rule in the same fashion as this is, it's not and there are enough scandals on the internet that you can read about where some person has deleted the production database by mistake and there was no way to recover it. So what I want you to take away from this is that at least in my world there are only two rules that I can off the top of my head think of that nobody violates in software development. They are cornerstone rules and number one is that you test your code. It doesn't have to be unit testing but you test it. You always verify it. I don't care if you are God's gift to programming you are a human and therefore your code is like it has the ability to be incorrect. If that is a possibility, you always test it, no matter how sure you are. Second thing is that you always back up your code. You have some way of storing your, like making sure that you can roll back changes or something like that. Because if you, as I said, even if you test it and you ship something that is broken, you need a way to undo, undo those changes just so that you can go back to a previously saved state where you knew the code was working. These rules, I would say, are as universal and un, nobody pretty much violates them within the industry. That's at least how I think about it. Have a great day.